have puppies that are going crazy right now. Okay, girls. What's going on? Come here. Let's put you guys up on the bed. Come here. Come over here. Let's get on the bed. Let me see. Okay. Up you go. Let's hang out over there. Yay. Yay. Okay. Maybe that will help them. Hi, ladies. All right. I uh, it took a second to get this set up because YouTube makes you fill out all these forms and check marks. So I hopefully, oh, it says 10 people are in here. Good morning. Good morning. Sunshine age. Hello. I wish there was a way to do this where you, I could see your faces like, um, like a Google meet. Aren't they on? Hey, Sabrina, how are you? My eyebrows look scary. I just threw them on. <laughs> hey, Sabrina, how are you? Sorry about the puppies, ladies. Hello, is it Andrea or Andrea Stokes? Good morning. Hopefully, I, hopefully one of those is right. We'll go with Andrea. Sonia, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The girls are like, are you saying good morning to me? Good morning, Liberty. Good morning, Liberty. Come on. Come here. Oh, my goodness. Come here. You guys are just going to make so much noise. So much noise. Good morning. Okay. Okay. All right. You guys play. <laughs> um... I heard it was cold in um, California, Sabrina. Lady Leo was on the uh, premiere, and she said it's like 40 degrees. I think that's what she said. Um, what are we here in New York? Let me see. Ours is 27. They said it feels like 16. I don't know who does the feeling, because it feels quite cold. Oh, FET is frozen embryo transfer. So sunshine... I'm sorry, ladies. Let me get them out of here because they're going crazy. I thought if I put them on the bed. Come on, girls. Come on. I don't know why you guys cannot share. So mean. You're so mean to your sister. Okay. You guys go over there. Here's a toy. All right, I'm so sorry. They were quiet through the whole premiere. And then as soon as I put this light up and, and started talking to you guys, they went crazy. So FET is a frozen embryo transfer. And then a regular transfer, they just typically call it a transfer or an ET, an embryo transfer. I just, it reminds me of the little guy with the finger. Um, but yeah, so Sunshine is prepping for her FET, her frozen embryo transfer, as am I. So um, she asked if we could chat live after. Hey, Deborah. Um, used to live in Detroit. Oh, my God. Detroit was called. I lived in a suburb of Chicago for a little while. And that was, oof. I made it eight months. I was supposed to live there for a year. And I had to hightail it back to California. The whole summer, I think I went like... August through March or something like that. March, August through, yeah, I think it was March. August was hot and humid. And um, winter was just like unhumanly cold. Um, Sonia, where are you in your fertility journey, Sonia? Like, what are you working on right now? Hey, Carla Jones, 29 in Philly. Yay, yay. Oh my God. Yeah, you guys are not that far from us. Like, uh, two states down, right? It's Jersey and then Philly like kisses, or I shouldn't say kisses, but touches up against um, Jersey and, and Philly are right next to each other. Yeah, it's cold. It's chilly. Although right now my the sun is coming in, so I'm not so chilly, but um, when once my, this window is, you guys can't, I'm just talking. Can you see that? That side is... Yeah, that is east facing. So once the sun starts to move further, um, it'll get chilly in here. Kiss New Jersey and New York. Okay, there you go. Our um, 
my company's headquarters are there. I'm sure you know this. The big Comcast building is there. So I go, I haven't been in a while. Well, because of the pandemic, I haven't been very many places. But yeah, um, I go a couple times a year down there. Philly is gorgeous. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think I said hi today to Deborah. So I'll wait for Sonia to answer about the where she is in her journey. But basically, I just had the premiere of the detox video. So I'm doing all the detox stuff to prep. I do want to say I said it in that video, but I want to say it again because people were commenting like, I had a baby and my I was overweight according to my BMI. That absolutely can happen. I'm not saying that it can't happen. So I just want to be clear for me that the doctors, uh, the maternal fetal medicine doctor wasn't like, no, you have to lose the weight or you can't have your embryo transfer, your frozen embryo transfer, nor was the RE Dr. McConnell saying, no, you can't move forward. They were fine with that. They both noted that my BMI was high and that ideally... I would not be overweight going into the pregnancy because one, I'm advanced maternal age, AMA. And so I'm already high risk going out of the gate. So why add one more high risk thing if that's just a box that I can check? Does that make sense? Like if I could just get the weight down. Um, I'm high risk because of my age. I'm high risk because I have one kidney. I'm high risk because the baby is IVF. Um, so they're more prone to have heart conditions. I'm also high risk because my first pregnancy, I had an IUGR, uh, so many acronyms, intrauterine growth restriction, which means Cheyenne stopped growing at a certain point. So she was five pounds, six ounces when she was born. She was big enough to go home from the hospital. She had no issues in the hospital, but there was a noted point when she stopped growing. So that's also, they don't know is that specific to my uterus or to my genetics, right? So if it's to my genetics, then we don't have to worry about it because my genetics are not going to be involved in this baby. If it's my, well, at least I should say my inherited genetics, genetics that I would pass down, because obviously my uterus is part of my genetics too. But if it's if it's my uterus, then that's a different thing. So that's why I'm doing the, the detox and the weight loss. 41 and chose to stop having children because I've had complications through my pregnancy. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. So you decided to stop. So you already have had at least one child. Um, oh, you're starting your FET transfer with the donor egg. Yay, you're in the club. When are you um, starting yours? So my donor right now um, is just been put on birth control. Like she's had cycle day one. I know you guys can hear the puppy. Sorry, they're going crazy. Um, so she goes in for her baseline this Friday, the 28th. Where are, where is your donor, um, in the process? I'm so excited and I'm so nervous. Although the way it's timing out, I'm actually now like the eggs or the embryos might be frozen for a hot minute, the way our cycles are timing out because I just ovulated this past week. So by the time... Oh, I don't want to think about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, it'll work out. Even if like, what I'm hopeful for is that this next cycle that I definitely get to transfer. So I guess it'll depend on timing because Dr. McConnell had originally wanted to put me on birth control. And then the last note I got was they were not going to put me on birth control. They're just going to do, hang on. I'm, I'm going to go check on the girls because they're fighting. <laughs> Justice. Justice. Okay, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this, guys, because they have all these toys and they've decided to fight over one toy. They both want the same toy. That is Justice Growling at Liberty. Come here, Libby. Come here. Come here, Liberty. Come sit with Mama. Come on. Oh, now Justice wants to come. <laughs> Do you see how the people are seeing you act up over the toys? Do you see that? <laughs> Stop it. 
hold on because this cannot go on. Oh my God. Look at these toys. Have these toys. Come here. Come here. Have these toys. Come this way. Come on. All right, sorry. We're gonna have to separate them because they're going crazy. <sighs> that means you're not pregnant, not a casa? No house, not a casa? Hi, Roseanne. Uh, oh, you're using frozen donor eggs, okay. Um, a frozen donor embryo, okay. Oh, meaning they're already, I'm gonna use frozen too. Um, but I think you mean yours are, are already frozen, so you don't have to go through the, the stem process. Okay, well, that's nice. So are you doing, are you doing your meds yet, Miss Sun? They are worse than children. Oh my God, do you see those teeth going in? Sorry about that. Um, normally have a normal BMI, but I gained quickly during my retrieval cycles and first FET. Goal is to get back down to my normal weight BMI before transfer. The hormonal weight is stubborn. It surely is. The hormonal weight is definitely stubborn. Um, I have four in all pregnancies or top. Oh, Sonia, I'm sorry. I'm glad that you got your four though. But yeah, that the rough pregnancies. Do you guys ever watch that show? Um, oh my God, it's with the midwives. There's an American one. And wait, I'll look at my history and see. But there was one last night where the lady had a traumatic birth um, where she had like a third degree tear and she was having another one. She was having another pregnancy, not another issue. And she was like freaked out. I would have been freaked out too. I don't know if I would have been able to do it again. One born every minute. So there's an English one uh, and an American one. Um, any advice, please? <sighs> Oh, Andrea, you love them. Oh, the oh my God, the girls are going crazy. Any advice, please? My HCG decreased to 270. That means I'm not pregnant now. Um, oh, thank you. Okay, I gotcha. You're on birth control now. Okay, so that makes sense. So I may have to go on birth control depending on how this cycle times out with the donor cycle. Originally, the doctor had come back and said no. Actually, I'm not even gonna say originally. First they said yes, then they said no. I think it's gonna time out um, to when they actually have the retrieval and when, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. She goes in Friday for the baseline. That's what I wanna think about. Oh my God. She goes in Friday for the baseline. Hopefully there are follicles. Hopefully there's no cysts. Hopefully she doesn't have COVID. Like all those things I'm just going to pray on that day and not overwhelm myself with all the thoughts. Not a casa. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to advise you on this. I have been in your shoes. I had my first miscarriage in 2017 where my HCG went down. However, um, there are other things to look for because there's studies that say HCG alone is not enough, especially in the early days. Like, is there still a heartbeat? Have you talked to your doctor? You know, is there progress otherwise? Um, what is your progesterone looking like? Like maybe they can do some support there. I don't want to say that your pregnancy is over. That is not, yeah, I just, I would definitely work with a doctor on how that gets to. But the doctor, she didn't give me anything to take about my miscarriage. Um, if that's something that you want, you should definitely talk to your doctor about that. Um, doctors don't normally, I shouldn't say normally, you have the option. Do you want to miscarry naturally? 
or do you want to have um, or do you want to abort basically is what it technically is like, do you want to medically abort the child? So if that is something you're interested in and your doctor has confirmed that your pregnancy is not viable, there's no heartbeat, et cetera. Um, I would definitely work with the doctor on that. Okay. So let's see, Miss Sun and Sunshine. I do want to go back to the FET prep. Um, because to your point, FET prep is very different than a frozen, uh, I'm sorry, than a fresh transfer. Um, she told me stop my progesterone and I'm waiting my miscarriage naturally. Okay. So then you have a game plan. You have the option of getting the medication. I originally said I didn't want the medication. And then before I left the doctor's office, I decided that I did want the medication. And so, um, it's up to you. It's up to you. It is. I, well, I've only had it with the medication. It is painful. Like I remember the doctor saying, can you guys hear justice? She's going crazy. Oh my God. Hang on one second. Someone remind me I'm talking about medication. This is their active time of the day. Sorry, guys. They don't nap till later. Um, so the doctor told me the medication would be like um, period cramps, and it was nothing like that. So I would I would work with a doctor if you want something different. I do not. A, I'm sympathetic to your plight right now. However, I do want to at least address the FET questions that ladies had who came over from the other video. Um, I am sorry that you are losing your child, though. Do you know what meds you are taking for this transfer? I do. So I am taking um, estradiol, the pill, and then I'm also, and uh, assuming my lining grows fine, it'll just be the pill. If I need supplementation, I will have um, the patch additionally. So um, both the pill and the patch. And then um, I'm taking progesterone and oil, which I have not done that before. And I have to do it myself. So that makes me a little bit nervous. I have been watching videos about that. If anybody has any tips, I've seen where people have been like heating it because it is oil so that it doesn't like sludge. I'm not going to do it into my backside though. I'm going to do it into my thigh. That's why I'm looking down here. Um, just because I just watched someone, her husband injected her or stuck her in her sciatic nerve, which is my worst nightmare. He did, obviously she reacted. So she they realized before he injected the meds. Um, yeah, I'm just already terrified of it. I've done my HCG intramuscularly for my prior retrieval. And that was, I mean, once I got the needle in, it was fine. But doing it every day, I guess, for, you know, successful pregnancy, doing it for 10 weeks is a little daunting. What meds do they have you taking after your birth control pill? Oh, good advice, LLP Cheyenne. Thank you, Brittany. Thigh is going to hurt. Yeah, I I don't I don't doubt that. I just am not trying to do it in the butt. Um, but Dr. McConnell, because last time we did progesterone suppositories when I had the fresh with my own egg and, or my own embryo and um, or my I guess they're all my embryos with it, embryo created using my own biological egg. I did the HCG in the thigh. It was not fun. And I know progesterone oil is thick. So hopefully heating it up makes it easier. Um, my thighs still have quite a bit of fat on them. So maybe that will help. Um, even though I'm so I'm losing weight. They're they're pretty. Um, Brittany, did you do your own in the backside? 
Carla says, I've decided to stop my TTC journey for now and focus on my weight loss journey. I'll be 43 in March. So I know my biological clock is ticking, but I understand extra weight makes my journey a lot harder. I totally understand that, Carla. I totally understand that. And then if you get that out, if you get the weight loss out of the way, that increases your chance. So if you can do it, you know, if you're 43, do it by 44, um, just before 45, you should have a good chance. Um, heard great success stories about progesterone and oil. Have you, Cheyenne? <laughs> I've just, I don't know. I've been against it. I'm like, can I just do vaginal? But listen, whatever it takes to get the take on baby. 10 weeks in the thighs. Luckily I have two thighs. So hopefully that'll help. But, um, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it, but if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Um, did my PIO intramuscularly in the glute for my first transfer, I would do it right before walking my dog because walking it out helped me to not have knots. Oh, nice. So that means you did it in the morning and not before bedtime. Um, put it in a heating pad for about 10 minutes prior. Okay. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah, I've been seeing different videos where people are putting it in, um, heating pads. They don't show. So when I do mine, I'll show it. And then you guys can tell me if I'm doing it right or not. Um, so yeah. Hi, sunshine. Are you out of here? We'll talk to you later, sunshine. Thank you for coming to visit us. Um, I know that you're in Netherlands. So I'm sure it's late there. Um, your husband does it. Ice the area and numbing cream. This is my second go around. Okay, nice. Um, I do have numbing cream. I got the 5%, which I actually had gotten from, I think the oil is better than vaginal. Actually, vaginal was messy and made me a little raw down there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a personal um, preference. I um, Messy versus lumpy legs, you know what I mean? Um, nobody else is going to be down there. I've done the... I've done two different kinds of cream. So I had the Crinone, which was my favorite by far. And then I had the suppositories. The The Crinone comes out as a foam. And so it there, it, there, it wasn't messy for me at all. Um, it w went out as a foam and it absorbed it. So um, that was my favorite. However, I understand that the doctor feels like the efficacy on the... Um, PIO is, is higher as far as, I think mainly because they can measure it in your blood or the vaginal, they can't measure it. And so they know if you have enough, they want it to be over 20. I, I think that's easier. And because I have had two miscarriages now, um, it just makes sense. It just makes sense, but it's not my preference. So did, what did we lose? Andrea, did, I want to know you, you're on your birth control now. Are you going to do estradiol and PIO or do you know yet? Um, has anybody done an HCG wash? I'm curious about that. I asked the coordinator, the nurse. I don't know what she is actually now. There's a nurse, there's a coordinator, whatever. My IVF coordinator about it. And she said they don't do that at um, Columbia. Leprolide, also progesterone and oil, estrogen pills and the patches and other one you just said that goes and you're, you know where. <laughs> yes, probably the crinone. Crinone was my favorite. So you're doing both progesterones. I don't know what leprolide is. Okay, so you that's a good um, mix. And you have the birth control, which is, I think, estrogen and progesterone too. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So I have that day of transfer. I'm like such a nincompoop. I have bought my outfit. I'll do a video on it for you guys. I bought my outfit for what I'm wearing to transfer. I bought a gown um, to wear while I'm in the transfer. And I figured, you know, I don't know. I have done faith purchases of baby stuff previously. And I want to do some faith purchases of pregnancy. And so um, I got... I ordered the gown. So I will, it will also be a labor and delivery gown. It snaps up the bag. I got it from, I think it's called Milk and Baby. And um, yeah, I got that. And then I got new socks. Um, they have like a rainbow, like coming up their knee highs because when you go in, they make you put the booties on. So I want to be able to see my socks. So they come up the knee high. So then the booties will be down here. Um, and they, I think it's like rainbows and unicorns or something. It's like a big rainbow and then little unicorns dancing around it. 
so I'm ready. Dr. Cher doesn't do HCG wash either. Um, my doc at Cher. Oh, your doc at Cher. Who are you with at Cher? I was over at Cher. Dr. O is not there anymore, though. That's who I was with. Um, I knew I knew what you meant. Huh. We'll be psycho buddies. I'm scheduled for late February. Oh, yay, Brittany. I hope so. Um, will you have McDonald's fries after? I think so. I didn't do that last time. I didn't know about it. I think I'm just now catching on to that, or at least last year in the different videos. So yeah, I'm going to do the McDonald's fries. What is it supposed to be like the sodium? What's the thing? And then is anybody doing kicking it old school with like pineapple chunks, bromelade? Um, oh, I do have to take baby aspirin, Andrea. Um, I do have to take baby aspirin, the 81 milligram, which I thought I wasn't going to have to because of the one kidney, but the maternal fetal medicine doc, Dr. Um, Lasala, I think that's her name, <laughs> wants me to take it starting um, in preparation for the transfer. So that is there. Etsy has really cute transfer socks too. Oh, yay. Um, I think I got these. I either got them off Amazon or some other, I don't remember now, but they're, they're on their way here. And then I got like a cashmere sweatsuit to wear into it. And I got new um, travel shoes. It's all camel is the color. So they're like jogger pants with a loose draw, drawstring because I, the peeing and the water thing, I did not get down last time. So if anybody has tips on that, how to not have to like urgently, urgently go, um, that I need your help on. But so I got there, they're like, it's a jogger and a zip up hoodie, um, something that I can get in and out of really quickly and it's cozy. So um, yeah, and then the socks, the gown, I think that's all I got. Um, I'm going to straighten my hair just because it's easier. It's the salt in the fries. Okay, good. I think it'll just be, oh, you're doing bromelain 500 a day, one to five DPO. Are you, are you in a transfer right now, Cheyenne? Or that's what you did for your last one? I know the doctor did say if I'm doing the baby aspirin, not to take the bromelain because it also acts as a blood thinner, which I didn't even know that was a blood thinner. Um, I did baby aspirin too. I'm doing pineapple for fun. McDonald's fries is more for retrieval or fresh transfer sodium for, Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do McDonald's fries last time at all for retrieval or for my fresh transfer. I didn't know about it. I think I went and got like chicken and waffles after my, um, retrieval last time or no, after my transfer retrieval, I went home and got in the bed. Oh, what about rest? What are you guys? So I haven't talked to Dr. McConnell about this though, but I've seen it on both where some doctors are like, don't rest. Some doctors are like, take it easy. If you have a heavy lifting job, which I don't, don't do that. Um, what do you guys think about rest after the transfer? Is it? Oh, but the acupuncturist did say to do something that is helps with the circulation. So like light walking, like don't go home and sit down all day was what she said. Naturally, I got my BFP a week ago. Bromelain. Okay. Are you, oh, a week ago today. Oh my God, congratulations. When was your transfer? Um, That's awesome. So yeah, I, um, I'm going to do acupuncture before and after the transfer. Br Brittany didn't be normal. What does that mean? Be normal. Don't do any of the, um, don't do any of the, oh, exercise why just have a normal day. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that makes sense. I think sitting down doing nothing is, would just drive me crazy. And I think, but I probably will go to bed early that night just because I think, all of the adrenaline like leading up to that day. Um, what about volume? Is anybody taking volume? I know some people recommend that to relax it. I think I'm gonna ask for something just because I already have anxiety in general. Um, so maybe that will help. I was a nervous wreck last time and then having to hold your pee does not help. Um, I flew right after my first one, went straight to the airport. This time I will rest, but I have to walk my dog. So I'll break up the rest with easy short walks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll walk the dogs. That sounds like something heating pad on feet. That sounds good. Okay. 
Um, hey, L. Davis. We're just over here discussing plans for um, embryo transfers, fresh embryo transfers. Lupron, estradiol, and POI shots. Okay, so I'm doing the estradiol and POI shots and baby aspirin. Um, I did the day before my transfer. What did L. Davis, what did you do the day before your transfer? Exercise, walk. Um, Sunshine was the first one when you got on the plane. Was that one successful? That seems so stressful. Not just, um, yeah, just the airport for me. The travel for me can be stressful. Like I have, I have my list and I have everything else, but it seems like there's always something. Um, I like the heating pad on feed. I definitely have a heating pad ready to go. I Oh, that's the other thing that I got. I got the fuzzy socks again. So like the little booties with the... Um, what is that little like lamb's wool thingy inside? I don't, I don't know why my brain is saying Sherpa. It's not Sherpa, but that's what it is coming to my mind. Um, I did the same as Alexis. I also did prednisone and intralipids and antibiotics. Where did you get your intralipids, Sunshine? I've been looking for those and I've been in chat rooms. I heard like a nurse can come to your house to do it. It's controversial though. The part of me wants to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it. And part of me is just like trust the process. So I'm, I'm on the fence. Um, I think a nice rest. It's an emotional day. I watched something funny on the TV and ate my favorite food. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, Lindsay, that sounds really good. Like some comfort food. I'll have the French fries, but then come home and have like something with mashed potatoes, like real mashed potatoes. I've been doing these cauliflower mash, like real mashed potatoes and butter and cream and um, I can't have ice cream. I was going to say ice cream, nothing cold, but, um, like some soup and snuggle up and watch some Netflix, put the warm, um, heating pad on my feet, having like a nice blanket. Um, that sounds cozy, especially because it's winter. You know what I mean? If it's going to be a cold day like today, why not snuggle in? It was unsuccessful and was so stressful dodging massless people. Oh, this was recently doing a different approach this time, or this was since the pandemic that you, the massless people, I'm so glad that Biden made it uh, mandatory, like a federal mandate. If you're flying that you need to have a mask, um, black seed oil on my feet with fuzzy socks. Ooh, I like that. What does the black seed oil do? I've just been reading about it. What does it do on your feet though? Um, with your fuzzy socks. Interlipids at home. A nurse came over. Oh, Sunshine, where are you? But the clinic does it. And this time I will get it at the clinic. My clinic does not do it. And what is your protocol for the interlipids? Somebody told me they would do it at CVS. They would mix it and bring it. But when I went on their website, I couldn't find it. So if you could tell me here, or if you could email me, Tanika at, uh, I'll put it in the chat, Tanika at simplytanika.com. Um, because I think I want that in my life. Not the day of, though, um, but before. I think I think I've read that people get it like a, a week before or so. Let me know. Um, after I had my heating pad and fuzzy socks, I ate pineapple core and drank palm drink. Oh, look at you, L. Davis. I'm going to do my palm drink during um, lining prep. So while I'm taking the estradiol, I'm going to do the palm drink. It's so freaking high in sugar. It's like 48 grams. It's natural, but it's high. I've added, um, oh, my nose is getting stuffy. Let me grab a blanket. I've been doing um, the arrows, the pomegranate arrows. Like I put it in my chia bowl. So that was helpful. Um, I will send you an IG message or email. Okay, thank you. The IG messages sometimes get hard to find, um, mainly because I don't go on there every day, but either way, I'll find it. Are you also Sunshine H on IG? Uh, I'm trying to get my foot on the ottoman. Okay. So, but thank you, Sunshine. I appreciate that because I'm interested in the interlipids. So I've seen, I've been on the chat boards. I've seen ladies do interlipids. I've seen them do um, HCG wash like a week before to help with the stickiness. Um, I am going to do IV. So I'm going to do my, um, aside from the interlipid, I'm going to have the immune, the immunity boosting one done. And then I think, so last time for my um, fresh transfer, I had like antibiotics. So I think that's normal for everyone. And then there was some 
anti-inflammatory thing, but I don't have my list yet. Like the nurse sent me my prep list, which that video I'll po post on Wednesday, but it did not have, um, it didn't have the antibiotics, which I think I had like prednisone or maybe that was the steroid. I don't remember. I got to go look at my other list, but there was a lot of stuff. And I wasn't sure if it's because that one, like I had just come off of stem meds and they're trying to calm everything down. Hopefully this is just more straightforward. Um, it absorbs faster with the warmth. Black seed oil keeps the immune system healthy and inflammatory response. Okay, nice. I have some black seed oil. I was going to take a couple of tablespoons of it, but I hadn't heard about using it on the feet. That is interesting. And, and, oh, thank you, Anne. You're so nice. Um, just trying to bring a community together, right? So we can all get our babies. I appreciate your kind words. Um, yeah, ladies, this is like the FET. There's so many unknowns, right? Because they, we know the embryo is in there, which is obviously easier than just trying at home. And we know like it's going to, mine's going to be a blastocyst. So that's day five. But then what makes it stick? Oh, I also watched, do you guys watch It's Kelsey's Life? They gave her HCG to inject after her transfer. So they did one in the office. And then she has like, she's meant to do like one seven days later and then some other time later to help encourage the environment. Has anyone done that? And what do you think about it? I was, I kind of like that because... I actually think I like that better than the idea of the HCG wash just because it would um, kind of send out the signals. And if it's already in there or they do it the day of transfer, it immediately is in the uterus. So then maybe that encourages the embryo to stick. I don't know. But I did. Um, I recently watched hers, but she's had recurrent miscarriages. And I don't even know if it's going to work. So I'm, I'm curious if anyone else has done it. So she's still, I think she just did her transfer or she just did her transfer prep video. Um, but she went through like all of her medications. Um, yeah. So Sunshine, when you did your travel, was it because you were traveling from your clinic to back home or because you had somewhere to go? I'm just wondering if you're coming in from coming from out of state to somewhere. And then if you plan to stay in a hotel, since you said you're doing a different approach this time. Um, that was one of the things, cause I know people were asking last year or the year before, like, I'm just not going to count 2020. <laughs> it, they were asking in 2019, why didn't I go to CNY? And I just did not, or why didn't I go abroad? I just did not want to be like traveling, I did, I just was like, um, you must get plenty of rest. Okay, that makes sense. And I think L. Davis, I think, don't quote me on this. I'm gonna come up with a plan. I don't have a plan yet because I'm still doing research. But I think I'm going to take melatonin once I start my medication. Um, the And I say once I start the medication because melatonin can mess up the cycle. Although right now I've already ovulated, so I'm taking it. Um, but typically I wouldn't take it in the first half of my cycle because it has delayed my ovulation in the past, but I think I'm going to take melatonin just so I'm not only resting the day of the transfer, but that I go into the transfer rested. I'm not going to be doing any, um, calorie restrictions when I go into it. Uh, I'm not going to even be doing, well, I'm not going to add sugar back, but I'm not, I, it's just not going to be crazy restrictions. I am going to do the palm juice because I want that to help with the lining. And so there is sugar in that. It's a high amount of sugar. Um, plenty of salads. Yes, indeed. Oh, interesting. So I went to the acupuncturist this week and she cautioned me against salads. She sent me a whole thing of blood warming. I mean, it's traditional Chinese medicine. Um, Dr. Clara, she sent me a list of like blood enriching, blood warming foods to eat. She was saying like the salads are not, don't help move the blood around. Um, I mean, obviously L Davis, I know that it worked for you. I'm just, you know, maybe it's my old body or my old uterus that needs extra, um, movement and blood warming, but yeah. So that is, yeah, right. That's what she, it kind of threw off my weekend too, because I had planned salads. Um, so 
I think I'm going to have some salads the rest of this cycle, but specifically in the progesterone in the luteal phase, she was saying, um, not cold foods. So do plenty of like warm nourishing foods, like, um, roots. So also beets, uh, yams, carrots. Um, yeah, I have to print out the list. I don't have it. I don't want to misspeak, but we went through it. Um, I live in the city where my clinic is. Travel was unrelated to the transfer itself, but I don't recommend that during the pandemic next time I'm pampering myself. Oh, good, good. Okay, so you don't have to go anywhere. I definitely, I um, I traveled twice during the pandemic and I do not recommend it. Luckily, well, the first time I traveled was when it was just jumping off in the US. So that was February of last year. So I didn't even wear a mask. I didn't think about wearing a mask. Nobody was wearing a mask. However, when I came back to New York in June, obviously COVID was popping and everybody was wearing a mask. I flew Delta and it was required to board the plane that you had to wear a mask. Um, obviously you have to take it off to eat. And I don't know, they did this whole video about how the HEPA filters are blowing down. So you're safer on the plane. It's air, hospital quality, air filtration. Needless to say, I didn't catch COVID and I felt safe. So I would definitely fly Delta again. I've seen crazy videos on like American where they're fighting passengers. Although now that Biden has passed this law, I think it'll be easier for people just to get arrested. Um, but yeah, traveling is stressful. Traveling during a pandemic is a whole added level of stress. Um, what kind of food did she recommend for blood warming? Yes, I would to know as well. That sounds interesting. Let me see, because she actually emailed it to me. So I'm on my laptop. Give me a second. My eyes are going to look like something weird because I'm going to find my email. And then let's see if I can pull it up. Okay, Eastern Nutrition, Blood Nourishing. Let's see, can I share this with you guys? How can I share my screen in here? I know there's a way to do it. Or there used to be a way to do it. No, it's not cooperating. Okay, hang on. It is. Okay, here's what she said. And this is Dr. Um, Clara Brown. You can find Clara with a K. Um, her website is clarabrown.com. So the following list of dietary suggestions is based on Chinese medicine principle principles, whoops, to aid in your treatment, high quality organic or free range meat, chicken, pork, beef, liver. Um, I did get liver. I got chicken liver. I'll tell you guys about that. Or actually it'll be in next week's video, but that is, um, anyway, uh, oyster muscle eel stocks and broth. So, you know, I'm all about the bone broths, um, bone marrow, eggs, legumes, black beans, lentils, green leafy vegetables, kale, chard, spinach, beet greens, mustard greens, wheatgrass, carrots, beets, broccoli, kiwi, oranges, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, parsley, molasses, fermented bean products, miso, tempa, seaweed, spirulina. Oh, that's good. I've got spiral. Well, I've got the spirulina tablets, black sesame seeds, flax, lychee, coconut, rice, stout beer, Guinness. Um, I don't know if I'll be having that. Goji berries, blackstrap molasses, black currants or currants. Foods to avoid, excess sweets, refined foods, chemical additives, overly bitter, sour, salty, and spicy foods, caffeine, excess dairy, cold, raw foods, salads, ice cream, ice water, etc. Special preparations. Make 40% of your diet organic vegetable and fruit cooked when possible. High quality, free range meats, 30% and complex carbs, whole grains, 30%. Other suggestions with more severe depletion, try an iron supplement like Floridix um, or liquid chlorophyll. So that is what 
um, she gave me for my transfer prep. Hi, Audra Emanuel. Guinness, right? I'm like, mm. I drank stout beer for my milk production. Pro oh, look at that. Okay. So there is some. I am, um, oh, Guinness. Guinness is heavy. Um, maybe. I'm having dry January. Did anybody else do dry January and didn't drink anything? Um, so I haven't been drinking anything. It's interesting. Maybe that'll help uh, <laughs> relax me. I don't know. I don't want to mess up my hydration. Overly's bitter too is interesting because I've had the the lemon and the, I still have some right here. Lemon and um, apple cider vinegar. But I'm knocking all of that off going into. Um, thank you, Audra. Going into prep for transfer. So the stout beer helps with milk production. How much did you have to drink? And then one of the um, YouTube ladies just told me that you don't even have to test out for alcohol in your beer. I remember they used to have those test strips. I think it was um, lifelong commitment with the Alexanders. Like it doesn't impact your breast milk. Have you guys heard that? Um, it's so going to happen for you this time. I want this so bad. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Um, oh my God. I feel like this is the one and I'm trying to stay positive because part of me is like, oh, thank you, Sarah. It's, um, it's a cream on there. It's like a sunscreen, sunscreen cream. Like it's not a BB cream. It's a CC cream. Um, huh. but I realize I sit at my desk to where I'm pointing over there is my desk. I sit there to work and the, in the morning, the sun comes in. So I have to put on sunscreen because I wear um, tretinoin at night, tr tretinoin, whatever that Retin-A product is at night. And um, you have to have sunscreen. And I'm actually peeling a little bit from the tretinoin, but thank you. It's so much better than it was um, when I started my YouTube channel. I'm actually, I think once I'm pregnant, that might be a video that I do on um, my hair is shrinking up on, mm -hmm. um, my skin journey. But part of it was when I went to the dermatologist, um, my IVF unicorn, and I told her, I, I only want to do natural stuff because I'm trying to get pregnant. And she was like, girl, your skin needs some medication. Once you get pregnant, we'll get to the natural stuff. And she was right because, oh my God, I can't even imagine three years later <laughs> not having had what she gave me. Um, I've been having a dry January too, trying to avoid the extra unnecessary calories. Yes. But my God, I could go for a glass of wine. Girl, Carla, you are singing my song. The sugar in it, the calories in it, right? While I'm detoxing and while I'm trying to get my weight loss on. But sometimes, especially at work um, on a Friday, or not at work, but at working from home on a Friday, like sometimes I might need a little something, something. We're doing a happy hour on February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. I might have a little, well, it's February. I might have a little sip. I'm just not going to... Um, go as hard once um once we're in february i think technically right now my bmi is 24 so if i can maintain that i am good i'd like to i'd like to lose a little more weight so that um because those videos are a week behind because i did the the donor egg video so I just finished recording a series this morning that you guys will see next week. So I am under on my um, BMI, but I want to like not just be by the skin of my teeth. I want to push it all the way down through the end of the month. So I have another week and some change, right? Because when is, um, let's see, when is, I know Friday is the 28th because that's payday. Um, oh no, Friday is the 29th. Oh, Thursday is the 28th. The girls have surgery. Um, Friday is the 29th. So there's 31 days in January, right? Why is this not working? Yes. So through next Sunday. So through next Sunday will be, you guys will see a video next Sunday about it. And then a week after that, but I'm going to end it on the 31st. Cause I might need, um, a little, a little, um, what do you call it? A little drinky drink. In fact, we might drink together. I might put together a live and we have a little drink. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Um, okay, we're going fast. It took five days. It worked because it took five days for my milk to come in. Um, oh, is that after you delivered any milk or did you have colostrum when you um, started the, the Guinness? I'm not mad. I love this doctor that's giving out Guinness for or advising to have Guinness. That's my kind of doctor. 
Um, <laughs> so, oh, collagen. Yeah, I am putting collagen in my smoothies. I put it in my coffee. I'm using the pure collagen. I put, there's a link for it in the last video that just posted. Um, it has no flavor, so I add it to a bunch of stuff. It's good for your connective tissue, which is why I started using it. I didn't even know like it would help skin, although it makes sense. Um, yeah, I have this Dr. Pen thing that I'm gonna use because I have like, there's a scar. I had a cystic pimple right here. You see that little mark? And they went in with a needle, like the steroid cream to take it down. And now that little bit, so it's supposed to help. Like the tretinoin is not gonna fix that. But these, like dimpling in my skin have smoothed out. They were much like more noticeable and deeper. Um, but I bought this Dr. Pen. Have you guys heard of that? Where you like do the micro needling yourself. There's this channel I watch, um, Natural Chaos, and she does it. I'm not gonna do what she does because she goes in like and her face is bleeding and I'm too squeamish for that. But I do want to, um, YouTube is a bad influence. It will just have me up late at night shopping. Um, so there was a doctor pin on Amazon and off I went to get it. So I haven't used it yet. I got it in December, but I'm going to try that. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, collagen is what we're talking about. I put the collagen in my coffee. I put it in other stuff. I put it in my smoothies. Um, I put it in my chia bowls. I love me some collagen. It's good for your connective tissue. It also is good for your gut lining and bone broth has collagen in it too. And I'm a big bone broth consumer. So I'm getting collagen every which way but loose but it lines your intestinal tract so it helps um like if you have leaky gut it helps with that but it basically like seals it so that if you're having any um all the nutritious stuff you're taking it keeps it from just getting lost before your body digests it so you have your upper gi and your lower gi i don't know why i'm going into this but anyway while it's sitting in your upper gi you want your body to like you want it to actually be absorbed into your body and not leaked out through your bowels and out through your, out as waste. And so collagen helps with that. And it helps with the joints and the connective tissue. So I think that's going to be good, especially for an old lady that's going to have to get her knees up in the air to give birth. Honey, I need all the connective tissue I can get. Um, pregnancy skincare routine. Yes. Oh my God. I have these masks. These, the ones that you put on your, I'm new to this. I'm new to that before I was just rubbing mask on, which I like too. But the ones that you put on, they, some of them have collagen in them. Some of them have like kiwi and some other stuff. Kiwi is like a little bit acidic and how I'm in love with those things. And they're so relaxing. Like they make you get somewhere and sit down. And so I'm all about the sit down because I was always on the go before. So I'm a big fan. Oh shoot, I left Liberty in the bathroom. Hang on ladies. Oh, here's Justice. I was like, why are they quiet? Liberty. I totally forgot. I put them in the bathroom to calm down. Now they seem to be calm. You want to get up here? Okay. No, you don't want to get up here. All right. Um, chemical peel before a few weeks before my transfer. I have skin problems too. I took Accutane in 2015. Oh my God. I took Accutane too. I did it in 2013, 2014. Although I do now wonder if that impacted my fertility. Have you read anything about that? Because you know how they test you for pregnancy every week because you can absolutely not get pregnant. So I know it causes birth defects, but I'm like, does it impact what's like, I wonder if they do test on that. I think the people that are usually having it are super young. Um, I was 40 something when I was doing it. Like, um, I would have been 43. And so I, I wonder that now. But anyway, it was a it was a miracle for me. I was in a lot of pain. However, um, once I started DHEA and the fertility treatments in 2017, by 2018, my face was like, pop, pop, pop. it wasn't as bad as pre-Accutane, but it was definitely, I, I'm i going to put it together video. There was one video I did where I basically looked look like a unicorn. I had a big cyst here and it was like inflamed, swollen. So yeah, I'm not trying to go back there. That was one of my side effects with DHEA. Um, 
Audra prepping for FET. Oh, at CMY, I'm advanced age, but not as open public as you. I'm trying to lose weight too, using keto, not strict though. Oh yes, Audra, I'm so keto adjacent. I don't even know. Oh my God. And then this week I realized, so I made my chia bowls with um, oat milk. It's all carbs. I was watching someone's video and they were using macadamia nut milk. And I was like, I wonder, cause I had always been using almond milk, but then I was like, I like the way oat milk tastes. And when I started switching off for carbs, I didn't even think about that. I did not even think about that. Anyway, um, again, not gonna waste the food. I have like six things of oat milk. They will all be drank, um, but I'm switching to macadamia. But yeah, um, totally keto adjacent. Um, injections made me gain weight. Yeah. Injections, um, are which injections? Oh, Davis, the PIO or the, for the retrieval, the retrieval meds are brutal to me. Um, they did all kinds of strange things to my body. Pre-milk, um, but just a small amount, which would come, would come in due to my age and anesthesia. Oh, interesting. I didn't know age impacted that. You'll have to send me more information. Age will impact how your milk comes in um, because there might be some Guinness in my future. Oh, Audra, thank you. Um, Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you're making comments because I don't remember um, hearing. I mean, recently I have, but like last year and the year before, I don't remember. um, I don't remember connecting. Okay. So yeah, that is interesting. Guinness will help bring your milk in. Who knew? We should have a celebration in January, have a little drink, a little drinky poo. I mean, in February, after we finish our dry January. And yeah, why not? Why not? So intralipids, I want to explore that. I'm definitely going to do the IV, the immunity boosting one. I'm also, um, I don't know. There's so many options. Part of it is like you want to throw everything but the kitchen sink at it. The other part is I really want to let go and let God because if the genetic makeup of my prior miscarriages of the embryos that I miscarried are the factors and I don't have anything to worry about, I know that my uterus will receive an embryo. It's just a matter of, will it stick? I need a sticky baby because in 2017, when I was naturally pregnant, I remember like my HCG going up to something like 25,000, but then we never made it to heartbeat. And so, and then this last time the HCG was so low, I knew in my heart of hearts that it was not going to be a viable pregnancy, but I prayed anyway, but I was like trying to prepare myself mentally for it not working. But how do you do that? How do you prepare yourself for that? You want to like, you want your baby to be viable. And so I was just really prayerful. And even this time, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, so I took a, an online class this week, the microlibrium app that I keep telling you guys about, they had an online, um, session where we all were in there live and we were chatting, but we couldn't talk. Only the presenter could talk. And it was about forming habits, swapping what it was called, swapping a bad habit for a good habit. And they talked about having like, if you're going to build a habit, start with one you already have. So for example, if you have a morning coffee and then you want to add a workout, you first, the morning coffee is your foundation or morning water or whatever you do. Then the second thing you do is the new thing. So that's the workout versus trying to say, I'm going to work out first. And then because you're more likely to fall into your old pattern. Why did I start talking about this? Oh, the, um, what was I just talking about? I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, the, I know what it is. So they talked about visualization and meditation and they were saying the woman, the doctor, I can't remember her name. She said, athletes do this is they visualize the outcome and they do it over and over again so that it's meditative. It's not a meditation, but basically they talk themselves through it. If you're running um, a marathon, you talk yourself through each mile marker and what does it feel like? And you see yourself finishing the line and you see the time that's on the line and you do it over and over and over again. And it's proven that athletes who do that have a higher performance rate than athletes who don't. So why can't I apply that to like my BFP? Like 
I need to start visualizing what, and I think that's part of like why I already bought my transfer, what outfit I'm wearing to transfer, what I'm wearing in transfer. So that helps with my visualization. I'm not recommending this. I clearly have a spending problem. Don't follow my suit. However, I know what outfit I'm wearing. I know what outfit I'm wearing to there. I know how I'm getting there. I know what my gown is going to look like when I get there. I've imagined what my hair is going to look like, like all those things that I can control and that I can visualize that part. And then I'm visualizing, figuring out the bathroom thing. Cause really the bathroom part freaked me out last time. Like I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And then they were like, let a little bit out a little bit. Like there, it was just a weird situation. So I've been watching videos on that. If anybody has any tips, I'm open to it. Um, but yeah, so visualizing that, visualizing having a perfect or semi-perfect, close to perfect um, blastocyst, be, seeing a picture of it, having it inserted into my uterus, having, you know, seeing a little flash on the screen where they show you, they test the embryo. So part of it is good that I've already been through an embryo transfer. Granted, it wasn't fresh, but I know, and at Columbia, like I've been in that room. Um, I know Dr. McConnell, I know like where things are coming from. So I don't have with me because I have anxiety that just ratchets down my anxiety. Cause it's one less thing I have to like worry about. So I'm, all about the visualization and every night I try to add to the story, right? What the visualization is. I haven't made it to the BFP yet. I've gotten it as far as like seeing the um, embryo bring trans being transferred and then having them flush the catheter and confirm that the embryo is in and then me getting redressed. So I have to build on it to get to like, now we're talking about fries. I'm probably going to do the fries just because um, walking the dogs, coming home with, putting the hot water bottle on my feet, you know, that type of stuff. So I'm building on that, but I think that's important. I think that is important. In my mind, I'm getting pregnant this time. There is no doubt. I don't know if I could say that last time because I was so traumatized by the miscarriages. I went into it with trepidation. And this time I'm so excited to be pregnant. I'm so excited to go through the whole process. So I just am, you know, looking forward to all of it. I just am like, come on. <sighs> anyway, that's my little rant. Um, Lupron and progesterone. Okay. Wait, now I got to go back. L Davis. Oh, the Lupron made you gain weight and progesterone. Progesterone for sure. Progesterone for sure. And now I'm worried. I mean, I know I'm going to gain with the injections of PIO, but it is what it is. I'll be fat, happy and pregnant girl. Um, age can have felt can affect milk production. Also pink stork products is great to take. I just became an ambassador for pink stork. So I've looked at all their fertility stuff. I haven't looked at the milk production stuff. So after I get knocked up, I will look at that. Um, oh, Nayland's mom. Thank you. At 44 with my own eggs. Yay. That is what I'm talking about. I feel like if I would have started a year earlier, I would have done it. Or if I would have had different sperm, it would have happened. Um, Right when I got pregnant, I was 45, just about to turn 46. It was right before. Or wait, is that right? I don't even know if that's right. My phone is over there. Um, it might have been. I just turned 45. But anyway, good for you. Congratulations, Nayland's mom. Um, empty bladder one hour before transfer. Drink one liter very slowly after the course of the next hour. Your bladder will be full, but you won't. Be. Okay, I got to get my camera because I got to record that. Let me see. Okay, that is what I'm talking about. Because it was miserable and it just, what about um, Valium, L. Davis? Did you take Valium for yours? Oh wait, that's Sunshine H. Empty bladder one hour before, okay. Thank you. Yes to visualization, yes, oh my God, okay. Um, pink stork products. I just started the fertility tea. Hope it helps me out. Yes. I started mine too. I think it's awesome. Um, and it is less expensive than the other fertility tea. I was getting the one, the natural one that I was getting on Amazon was like 23, 24 bucks. I mean, it was good. I'm not knocking it, but the pink stork is, um, priced better. If you guys go there, I have a discount, um, BFF 10, You'll get 10% off. Um, hi. Hello. 
Do you want to say hi now that you're not grouchy? Show the people that you know how to act right? That your mama raised you right? Hmm? Mm, okay. Um, this one is much more affectionate if you're wanting. Liberty doesn't like, because she's heavier, she doesn't like to be lifted up like that, but here she comes now. Do you want to be up too? No? Nope? Okay. <laughs> Are FET painful? I have a tilted uterus. Oh my God, I have a tilted. Wait, is my uterus tilted? My cervix is tilted. I don't know if they're painful. Audra. I hope not. I mean, the fresh was not painful. So I don't, I don't imagine that the um, frozen would be any different because it's going in with the catheter. Although for me, anytime someone is going inside of my cervix, that part is uncomfortable. Um, but it's not painful. That's why I want to ask for the volume too, just to be a little more relaxed. If the doctor won't give me volume, I might go to my um, GP and just get like a Xanax. But hopefully when I talk to Dr. McConnell about my anxiety, we'll just nip that in the foot, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I have the, my cervix is at an angle. So whenever, and it apparently it moves or it, I don't know, but like, even when I had my SHG, just the part of like locking the, I don't, I can't remember what it's called, but locking, is it, um, oh my God, whatever it is that they clamp down to hold your cervix in place before they insert, um, the catheter, not the calipers that open it up, but like after they have this open and then they try to hold it still so they can enter it, it moves and it's like at an angle. So that part always hurts. So I do remember that being like a little bit pinchy, uncomfortable dur during the transfer, but it's so quick. Um, the, honestly, for me, the most uncomfortable part was having to go to the bathroom, like having this full bladder, um, having this woman push down on you. I think based on um, what Sunshine just wrote, I probably started taking my water too early. Uh, so yeah, Sunshine, I did not do Valium, but I asked for it. Uh, Doc said not necessary. And honestly, it was fine without it. Okay. Yeah. See, I think, well, maybe sunshine, if, if I can get the bathroom thing down, then I won't feel like the need to have it. But just based on what my experience was with the fresh, I would definitely want something. Um, Naylan's mom says not painful at all. So there you go. FET wasn't painful for me. The volume relaxed. So you did tink Mitch had the volume. Okay. I didn't have any pain. Yeah, I had a pinch. I did not have a pain. But again, that was related to my own specific anatomy. I don't think I have a tilted uterus. I think it's just that I have the tilted cervix. Um, I feel like somebody would have told me by now if I had a tilted uterus. But who knows? Um, Naylan's mom, for women over 35, please talk to your doctor about CoQ10. Oh, my God. Yes, CoQ10, ubiquinol, definitely the ubiquinol form, um, 300 milligrams, the, helps the mitochondria. I'm a huge fan. Of it. I'm still taking it, even though I'm not using my own eggs. It just helps with my energy. I will actually probably take it. Now that I know as we age, our body makes less of it. I feel the difference. And so I'm just going to continue taking that. Um, and I'm also doing B12. Hi. Hello. I'm glad you're behaving. Mm, okay. Um, hi, I'm hi. There's people they can't see me. Um, at my transfer, they had spa music on with dim light, so it was relaxing. Oh, nice. I like that. I had a playlist last time for myself. Um, I might do that again, a different playlist, but I might do that. Or maybe have any of you guys done the circle in bloom? I downloaded those and I didn't do it last time. Maybe they'll do, I'll do that meditation or I will record my visualization and play that. Cause there's a lot of just like waiting or maybe it felt like it again because of my anxiety, like sitting out there, they were running a little late, but sitting in the waiting room, then getting dressed. Then when you get in the room, the nurse checks your bladder first before the doctor goes in. That's when they knew my bladder was too full. Um, but then you're waiting and then I try to go let a little out, um, and then go back in. So maybe I'll do that because the gown that I bought does have pockets so I can put my iPhone in my pocket. Who knows with all the COVID stuff though, like what they're letting in and what they're not letting in. I don't want to do anything to contaminate the, the room. So we'll see. Um, Maybe I'll ask for music and see. I don't remember if they had. The lights were definitely dim. I remember they wouldn't let me record because I asked, but I don't remember if there was music playing or not. Um, my doctor put me on it for a long time. Oh, Naylan's mom. That's good. 
I would say at least three months before trying to conceive. Cause that's like the pre-mester, right? The first three months before you're trying. Um, if it ends up longer, if you're trying for four or five months, obviously, but yeah, taking that the whole time to help with the mitochondria. Um, Audra is taking estrogen and vaginal inserts, prednisone and feeling so anxious. Any recommendations? Natural stuff. Lavender will help relax. Um, I don't know if you can take warm baths when you're doing the vaginal inserts, but if you can, Epsom salt is good. I've been doing salt baths with um, a little lavender drops in it. Although uh, this week I went to acupuncture and I put um, peppermint in there like to invigorate me. And then when I went outside, every part of my body was tingling that any, if the wind blew and I was dressed for winter, but like the wind, everything was like tingling. So but yeah, um, I would do something, I would do some self-care, some like foot massage. Um, you're already taking your medicine, so I wouldn't do anything to mess with your hormones. Like I wouldn't do any lymphatic massages or dry brushing. You want the medicine to go to where it's meant to go and not be like trying to, all the detoxing I would say would be done before. But some like oils, if you have a uh, diffuser, put a little lavender oil in your diffuser um definitely do some relaxation um playlist oh yeah I loved my playlist it was so nice it also gave me some thoughtfulness but I think I might just record uh, my visualization like do an audio recording and um I should be able to do that and save it to my phone right like an mp3 we'll see we'll see all right ladies oh my god it's 12 50 okay I am going to go thank you ladies for talking through all of these options with me on frozen embryo transfer. I will let you know what I decide. I'll definitely put it in a video. If you have any other things, um, or you have a diffuser, Audra, definitely have that. There's also, um, before we go, Audra, there's also meditation, fertility meditations on YouTube. If you just go to search and type in fertility meditation, they have different phases of like, if you're doing a retrieval part, if you're doing a transfer part, um, if you're natural conception, like you can go through a bunch of lists. I listen to those occasionally before going to bed. Um, there are some that have dim lights, which are better for bedtime. Or if you want to just like have it, I it's on. I play it on my TV um, in my bedroom. If you want to just have it on your phone, then you don't have to worry about the light. Like you can put the phone under the cover and just listen to it. They also have, I think this is how you say it, by annual or by annual beats. Um, I learned about those from Tamika TTC. It's not quite music, but it's beats that are meant to transform the rhythm of your body and what it's doing and help with healing. I think they are called healing beats. Um, those were also helpful for me. I still use those. Um, aside from fertility, I just find them to be balancing, but they have some specifically for fertility. So I would definitely recommend that. All right, ladies, you too. Have a blessed day. Um, bye, Tanya. Bye, Audra. Bye, Lindsay. L. Davis, who else? I want to make sure I see everybody. Audra, Sunshine H, Naylan's mom. I love that you came and shared your happy ending. Um, Naylan is lucky to have you as a mom. Sunshine H, Brittany Denton, um, Aisha, I don't know if you're still here. Erica, everybody who came. Thank you, ladies, for coming to hang out with me. Um, thanks for suggesting this because I was on the fence about doing it after the live. Um, but I'm, this was helpful for me. So hopefully someone got something out of it. And I love the idea of Guinness, um, to help with milk production. All right, ladies, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mwah. Baby does to us all. <laughs>